Have you ever listened to a sound recording that was too quiet, full of static, or had a horrible echo? Maybe it was too loud and full of pops and hisses. Well, with a basic, relatively inexpensive digital audio recorder, you can get podcast quality sound for your interviews. I use the Tascam DR22WL digital audio recorder because it's fairly inexpensive, a little over $100, and has pretty good quality audio for its price. With a height of 6.1 inches, width of 2.1 inches, thickness of 1.4 inches, and weight of 6 ounces, its small size and sturdy black and metallic colored plastic exterior also make it a good portable choice for beginning audio interviewers. Other key parts and features include built-in cardioid stereo microphones arranged in XY position. This just means the microphones record noise from all around the space, not from just one direction, and they are arranged in a crisscross pattern. A black and white display screen with orange backlighting, record and playback controls, a menu button, and setting control buttons located beneath the screen, a recording mode dial with several presets, an on-off switch with hold position to prevent controls from accidentally being toggled, buttons for controlling headphone or speaker volume, a dial for controlling microphone input volume or gain, a microphone in jack, a headphone out jack, built-in speakers, a built-in Wi-Fi feature allows for monitoring the recorder's audio levels visually and controlling the recorder from a smartphone using Tascam's app. Slots for two AA batteries. A micro USB cord powers the device and connects the recorder to a computer. A micro SD card slot and a screw-in hole on the back of the device for tripod mounting. The lights above the screen indicate that you've reached key audio levels. Green when you're hitting above negative 12 decibels and red indicates hitting zero decibels or clipping. I'll explain what those things mean a little later. I also recommend a few additional items. A pair of studio headphones. I use Sennheiser PX100-2 earphones. A windscreen, a furry one for outside, or a foam one works for indoors extra batteries, and an extra memory card or two. Now, once you've got everything, you're ready to start recording. Step one, find a quiet place to conduct the interview. Beware of background noises like wind, traffic, heaters, air conditioners, and other people. Step two, turn the audio recorder on. This is a bit tricky at first on the DR22WL. To do so, just pull down and hold the power switch on the left side of the recorder until the orange light on the display turns on. Step 3. For interviews, make sure the recorder is set to mono mode. Press the menu button on the front of the recorder. This will take you to the settings menu on the recorder's display screen. Make sure the type setting is set to mono and not stereo. Step 4. Make sure the audio format is set to WAV. In the same menu as you use to set the recorder to mono, make sure the format setting is set to WAVE 24-bit. Hit the menu button to exit the record menu. Step 5. Set the recording mode dial to M for manual mode. I do all my recording in manual mode. It gives maximum control over audio levels, and if you follow the guidelines in this video, it's easy to use. Step 6. Test the interview subject's audio levels. Hit the record button once. It will start flashing. At this point you are not recording, but you can monitor the microphone input visually and in your headphones. Position the microphone about a fist distance away from the subject's mouth. Have the interview subject talk into the microphone. Have them say P-pop repeatedly. P-pops are the loud bursts of breath into microphones from saying plosive consonants like peas. You can also ask the subject what he or she ate for breakfast to test audio levels. The audio level should be hitting at negative 12 decibels on the display's meter. Turn the gain volume clockwise to increase the volume and counterclockwise to decrease the volume 
until the highest levels are hitting the sweet spot of negative 12 decibels. Avoid hitting levels of zero decibels. At this point, clipping or cutting out occurs. Step seven, you're ready to record. Hit the record button again. The red light will turn solid red when it's recording. Remember, a solid red light means you're recording. A flashing red light means you're not. Caution. Be careful to avoid picking up noises from handling your device during recording. Keep a steady grip on the recorder. If you need to make adjustments, do so carefully or wait for a pause. Step 8. Once you're done recording the interview, stop recording by pressing the stop button. The red light will turn off. Getting good interview audio is as easy as that. I hope you found this tutorial useful. Now go out and record.